Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I've got Miss Vampirella for the most part glued together. Uh, let's take a look at her. I don't have her head glued on because I prefer to paint that separately. I did get her gold arm cuffs and her bracelet and this little ring that holds her um, clothing. We're going to call this clothing. Um, <laughs> that that holds that on. I still have to paint this little eagle emblem gold down here. Don't know if you can see that, but um, I'll probably do that on camera. And uh, yeah, I just really like how everything has come together. Everything was cut and keyed perfectly so that um, I didn't have to fill any seams and I love that because that's kind of the boring part of doing a model but yeah her arms fit in the cuffs really well and legs just fit like they're supposed to and uh, so let's put her back over here on the base I would uh, like to see in his next model these keys for her feet or for any model's feet I would like to see those go a little deeper into the base she doesn't really want to stand uh, really sturdy and I like to use the base uh, as you know a stand for when I'm working on a model we will put her head back on and I think what I'm going to work on is her goblet. I thought about printing this in clear, but then with clear resin, it's so hard to keep it clear. Uh, I think I'm going to go with like a pewter look. Uh, it's really cool. It, it, it has like the blood running out down the edge of the goblet for when you know when she's holding it like oopsie i'm drinking i'm spilling my drink but um yeah i have these really cool viejo shift paints and i'm gonna try going with this dark green tin uh not sure if i'm gonna go over gunmetal or glossy black i don't want a huge amount of color from this shift paint I just want it to have like a little hint of kind of this creepy old look um, and then I will use Citadel blood for the blood gods um, as the blood inside and coming out the edge of her goblet um, the only thing with this with the sculpt see if I can get her down here to show you the way her fingers are positioned you know that she's holding this goblet to get it to go between these fingers right here I had to sand a little bit of the stem but I think once I mean you can't really tell it well that's not very clear is it yeah there we go I think once I get it uh, painted up and glued in her hand, you're not going to be able to tell that I did anything to that. So, uh, let's start going. I think I'm going to start with um, the gunmetal and put the shift over that and see what that looks like. Because I, I really, I know how these shift paints work and they work amazingly well over gloss black um, they're really cool I've got a whole mess of these <laughs> we'll call it a mess um, it came in a box set I can't remember what the box was I know there's like four different ones that have different shift colors in them but uh, these are great for getting like a really cool subtle effect that it it shifts like this one 
light violet to green and it does it's really cool um, but I think this dark green to tin is going to give me a really cool kind of old uh, creepy looking goblet we're going to hope so anyway so uh, yeah let's get going let's get painting okay first things first I've got to get these gloves off I was working on a resin print and didn't want resin all over my hands so I don't like painting with gloves all right so I guess I'm gonna go with the brush probably would have helped if I had to pre-shuck my paints and we'll see if maybe I need to thin this down some I don't know yet probably well I hope paints tend to be pretty thick I kind of like the thought of it being a like a gothic looking goblet instead of like a clear wine glass I think what I'll do is Paint all this because it's so tiny, teeny tiny. I don't have anything to hold on to it, and I didn't want to blue tack it to a toothpick or anything because, or not a toothpick, but a little stick. Um, because you can see the bottom of the glass uh, when she's holding it, and I did not want to deal with peeling off blue tack and maybe leaving some residue pretty good love at the inside I'm obviously not worried about this where the blood is spilling out because that's going to be red anyway get the stem it's so tiny I probably could have just airbrushed this in like three seconds and this is just a base coat so you know I'm not really worried about all the sloppiness you know you don't want big globs of paint obviously because you'll see those underneath the uh, shift paint yes that's the word I was looking for <clears throat> okay so there is coat number one on our goblet it looks pretty cool, I think. We'll let that dry down a little bit and um, I don't know, maybe put a second coat. I hate it when I can see these little stair step lines I don't know what else to call them I don't know if you can see that those 
really bothers me. And I didn't really clean this up at all. I probably could have sanded it with 400, 800, and up to 2,000 and made it immaculate. But uh, I didn't. So there it is. And uh, I'm going to pause you for a second. And I don't know. Maybe we'll base her hair because I do like uh, to have that contrast between the face and the hair with the actual hair color or at least the base hair color so I can kind of more judge what the face is going to look like uh, yeah we'll do a pause and we'll come back and base her hair color and see if we need to do a second coat on this silver um, this is again gunmetal probably can't see that don't know why I'm having such a focusing problem. There we go. Okay, and be right back. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is mix uh, Model Air black and Game Color black. Um, both of them are flat, so that's not going to be my finished result. I will uh, go with a, a satin and gloss. I don't like to do the whole thing glossy because then it looks toyish. Um, but a satin gives a, a pretty good, uh, like, hair has a sheen. So you don't want flat because that's really dry hair. And you don't want gloss because then it starts looking like a toy. So um, with that big brush. Yeah, that'll work. Um, I, I tend to go with a mix of satin and gloss. I also tend to get a little sidetracked, don't I? Well, this is just a base coat. Um, you know, even black hair has tones. So, let's just start from the bottom and work our way up. This would have been super fast to just airbrush it, but then there would have been that whole masking her face and this is more fun. We'll just paint in silence. If I could figure out how to uh, work my Adobe Premiere I could do some, I could do some background music, but, uh, you know, I'm pretty sucky when it comes to editing the videos. Uh, yeah, I really want to apologize for that first one with all the popping. I have no idea what caused that. Um, usually you get a pop when you, uh, clip a video and start, make a clip. That's, that's what I was trying to say. When you make a clip uh, and then join another clip to it, a lot of times you'll get a pop. And I know how to fix that. But this popping was happening just randomly in my video with no clips, no cuts, no nothing. And I don't know what caused it. I need to find somebody to teach me how to use Adobe Premiere. I know there's like a ton of tutorials out there, but uh, I'm, 
I've always been one of those type of people that I want to mess around with stuff just to figure out how it works. Um, that's how I learn. And um, tutorials. Um, well, they kind of bore me. <laughs> If I'm going to be perfectly honest, they kind of bore me. I hope nobody's saying, well, this tutorial's pretty boring because you're just sitting here talking about nothing. Yeah, I could have got a bigger brush. I could have just slopped it on. Uh, to me, I'm, this is considered slopping it on. So, tell me in the comments, is anybody planning on printing her and painting her, or um, if there's anything you're working on, or if there's anything that you would like me to paint. Um, I am a sucker for anything Marvel. I know she's not Marvel, but she was actually a test print for Brian. And I decided, hey, I will go ahead and paint her up. Because I think she's kind of cool. I do like all the goth type things. I'm all about the Halloween. She's kind of Halloweenish, I guess. I'm sure most of you already know this, but if I ever need to stabilize, um, you can always rest your pinky on whatever. And if I don't have whatever to, to rest it on, I rest it on my other fingers. Um, it just gives you that stability with your brush. We're getting there. Black hair doll. And don't think for one second that you have to um, hold that head straight up and down to paint it. I will flip her head 19 different angles because there's just some things that you have to do like when I paint eyes I can paint one eye uh, with her head in in the normal facing position but then the other eye I have to turn her head completely upside down and that's just the way that's just the way I have to paint you work for, uh, I mean, you work with what you have to work with. Um, whatever is makes it easiest for you. Now, I'm not going to get, like, all the way up close to her face right now because there are so many colors going on her face. that it would be pointless to to paint and try to get that uh, perfect up there around her face. I will do that last. I'll do that when I actually start working on the hair. We're just basing right now. left her hollowing hole for me to put a stick in, but I didn't. So now I painted myself into a corner, didn't I? There we go. This 
this just gives me um, a base that I can look at in contrast to her face when I am painting her face doing all the shading highlights um, you know that kind of stuff this gives me that contrast that I need uh, to show um, to show me what it's actually going to look like. All right. So there is that. And then when that dries, I'm going to come back and I'll put a coat of matte varnish on her face because, oh, well, how about I put that in view? Um, not that it matters that it was $4.99, but um, Vallejo Matte Acrylic Varnish. If I do anything to her face and I screw something up and try to take it off, if I don't varnish in between, then I'm gonna, I, I have a potential to go back down all the way to the primer and I don't wanna do that. So um, just about after the base coat, I put the matte varnish on. And then when I start speckling, I'm not sure I'm gonna do that with her though. We may try something completely different. Anyway, when I do my washes, that's a for sure. We will definitely have to do washes. Um, I will let those washes dry down and then matte varnish over it again. I may end up with four coats of matte varnish, but that gives me that protection after the whole face is finished um, as far as the skin. Matte varnish, because when that dries, if I'm doing eyebrows and I screw up, get it on her nose or whatever, drop my brush, I can clean that off with water and that varnish gives the protection to everything underneath it. You're not going to screw up any of your other layers if you've got the matte varnish. So, that's just my airbrush cleaner. Also brush cleaner. So we will take a break once again until this hair dries down. And then maybe come back and we'll do our shift paint. And we're back. <laughs> All right, let's see how this works. Um, this is an airbrush paint. Wow, let's just put a whole bunch out there. And I have never brushed it. So I'm kind of nervous. Nothing can be undone though. So let's just, let's see, let's try on the bottom. Kind of digging that. Don't know if y'all can see that. But it's pretty cool. It's meant to go over gloss black. But I didn't want to do a gloss black because I didn't want it to be, wow, that's a whole lot of color shift. I just want like a little bit of hint that there's something 
going on? And I like it that the base, um, well, I don't, I don't know necessarily if it's a, a base, but the, the bottom shift is like a tin color. So it's like when I drag it out of my, of my palette, I, I see like a watered down black um, in the pool is green so yeah this is this is kind of kind of cool it gives me that like poison goblet vibe Yeah, I'm really digging this. It's it's awesome because in like certain white, it has like a copper tone to it. I'm kind of in love with that. Yeah, that's uh that's 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 pretty awesome. How about we screw it up? There we go. I'm digging that a whole lot. Awesome. Well, that was a neat little experiment. The color shift paints are just really cool. You can get, um, you can get a whole different look by going I mean, this was supposed to be over black, so, you know, now we know what happens when you put it over gunmetal gray. Um, I don't know what kind of effect you would get if you put it over white. All right. There's that. Absolutely loving that. And then the only thing I'll have left to do on that is paint, paint the bloody part. I wasted a lot of it. So I guess our next step is just going to be waiting on that hair to dry. And then uh, I'll start on the face. Maybe. I could go ahead and start shading her body. Because I would like that to dry down really well. Keep a good tip on your brushes after you rinse. Give it a little drag and turn, and you keep a really good tip on your brush. These brushes are old. Um, I've painted so many terrain pieces. Um, with these brushes, um, I mean, there's a little, there is a little bend on the tip, but not too much. So, um, great brushes. All right. Um, yeah, we'll come back in a little bit. Okay. Let's, uh, paint this blood inside this goblet. 
which by the way turned out amazingly well. Um, I totally love this thing. And the color I'm using for inside is um, Citadel Blood for the Blood God. Um, this stuff is amazing for a realistic looking blood rather than using your own. That was a joke. I have pre-shook. More silent painting. Painting in silence. You know, if I was not filming, my favorite music to paint to is, uh, well, there's two. The soundtrack from The Lord of the Rings and the soundtrack for, from Guardians of the Galaxy. That is my all-time favorite Marvel movie. Number one. Number two uh, makes me cry every time when Yondu dies. Oh, I hope that wasn't a spoiler. Surely everybody has seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. But if you haven't, you're really missing out on an amazing movie. I know I don't have this right um, at your face where you can see this, but I have to use my little um, magnifier because I'm old and have bad eyes but I promise you I'm painting it <laughs> gotta make it look like it's spilling out I'd like to figure out a camera setup that uh, will follow me because I do have a tendency to kind of go off camera. I'm new with this y'all. See if I can get closer to you guys. Oh, and I can't see that at all. But I love how this paint looks just like blood. Just throw it on the ground. I don't know what is going on with this. There we go. Like a goblet full of blood. Pretty amazing stuff. It's got, I don't know, some kind of translucency to it that blood has. I'll show it to you over white. I mean, that is.
tastes like blood. My white compensation is feeding back to my <laughs> to my palate. Yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. All right, now what are we gonna do? And like I said before, I use the Viejo Matte Acrylic Varnish. Viejo, I prefer to say Vallejo just because it's fun. Um, but I know it's Viejo. Uh, put the matte varnish on her face. And it has dried down. I think I'm only going to do washes with her. Um, usually I do a speckle technique that is, um, it gives her more of a, or it gives your models more of a, a realistic look, but she's kind of dead, I think, or, you know, one of those pale flesh, yeah, we'll go with pale flesh things. Um, so I don't want that lifelike look. I really want to go with just um, super pale so I'm gonna do a couple of washes you know obviously this is just a base coat um, can't just leave it like this and then uh, I guess we'll just see what that looks like after I've done a couple of washes and I'm thinking I want to do a blue wash usually I do uh, red and yellow just to get those skin tones and my speckles are about five different colors. But, yeah. I think we're going to do that. Let me get my stuff out and I'll come back 